Hi, I'm Brendan and on this week's episode of Really Good Tips, I'm going to be talking to you about the management and prevention of shoulder pain and injury. Unfortunately, for people with spinal impairment, it's really common to experience some degree of pain and injury of the shoulder over the course of a life. I was just noticing pain, pain when wheeling, pain when um, putting my chair in and out of the car, um, a little bit of pain um, just in general, even just when you wake up, shoulders feel a bit stiff, a bit sore. When I got these tears in my shoulder, it generally was a six week stint of um, of pain, uh, just in my general everyday driving, uh, pushing. Today I'm going to share with you some ways that you may help to prevent shoulder pain from happening and management, manage it if it comes about. There is a caveat to this talk that any plan for management or prevention of shoulder pain and injury needs to be tailored to the individual. Let's talk about prevention. Underneath the surface, the shoulder is a beautiful example of the complexity of human anatomy. There are many different muscles at work and there is a fine balance or harmony of these muscles required for all of the activity that our shoulder does. If you're a wheelchair user or highly reliant on your arms with daily activity, it's quite common for you to be using some of these muscles more than others. And with that, some muscles become stronger than others. What that creates sometimes is a wee bit of an imbalance of the strength of some muscles compared to others. That can lead to changes in posture. Typically, for a wheelchair user or a person who's highly reliant on their arms with daily activity, that normally means that the shoulders can become quite rounded forwards and that we tend to be a little bit stooped in our posture forwards. This can contribute to the development of shoulder pain and injury and is one of the things that we can look at to help prevent shoulder pain from occurring. Today we have Brett to help demonstrate some of the common exercises that can be prescribed for a person to help to try and prevent uh, pain and injury of the shoulder. Brett has 30 plus years of uh, wheelchair experience. Now stretching is all about trying to make sure that we don't have any particular areas of tightness of the shoulder which can contribute to the imbalance and changes in posture that can occur. One of the exercises that we'll look at here is to try and stretch the muscles of the upper trapezius which can often become quite tight and sore and one of the ways that we can achieve this is if Brett reaches his hand down towards the ground on this side and reaches this hand over top of his head and pulls his head over to the side and Brett's going to be feeling a stretch down the side of his neck and into his uh, upper trapezius muscle on this side. He can alter the stretch slightly by turning his head to look away from this arm a little bit. It's advised that you hold the stretch for 15 to 30 seconds. It should be feeling like a stretch but it shouldn't be painful. So the next stretch is a stretch of the muscles around the back of the shoulder and muscles that attach from the shoulder blade into the spine. And the way Brett's going to stretch these is by lifting up his arm, bringing it across his body and then using the other arm to cup into the elbow and pulling his arm into his body. Brett's going to feel the stretch in the back of his shoulder here and maybe even into his spine a little bit. The next stretch is a stretch for the front of the shoulder and into the chest. It's really common for people who are using a wheelchair or using their arms a lot for different things like transfers to get really tight in the front of the shoulders and for the shoulders to round forwards. The way that we can perform this stretch is with the arm held onto a wall, thumb pointing upwards, elbow straight and Brett's going to turn and rotate himself away from the wall to feel the stretch in the front of his shoulder and into his chest. So the next couple of exercises are particularly looking at muscles that we don't often use day to day with activity, especially as wheelchair users. And these are the muscles in this instance around the back of the shoulder that are responsible for pulling the shoulder blade into the back and pulling the shoulder backwards in general. And so with this exercise, Brett's got two therabands that can be tied to a wall therabands you can source from your therapist or from some of your local pharmacies. And what Brett's going to do is he's going to pull his hands into his chest, drawing his shoulder blades together into my finger as he does. And if he can, he's trying to draw his shoulder blades down a little bit as well as he does it. 
The next exercise is working a set of muscles called the rotator cuff. And these muscles, in this instance, are the muscles that rotate the shoulder outward. And again, a very uncommonly used with some of the daily activities that are common for people with spinal impairment like wheelchair use and transfers. And so they can get quite weak and cause that imbalance that we talked about. And the way that Brett can help to strengthen these muscles is by using again the TheraBand. And what he's gonna do is hold on to the TheraBand in this hand. I'm gonna tuck a towel into Brett's side and he's gonna squeeze that in with his elbow, keeping his elbow tight into his side, shoulders back, and he's gonna rotate away from his body with the TheraBand. Good. The number of repetition and sets is tailored to the individual, but generally speaking, the rule of three sets, 10 repetitions is used. Ideally, at the end of it, you should be feeling the muscle working pretty hard to achieve another repetition, and you feel the muscle starting to burn with the effort it's doing. The maintenance was, is a good thing because the pain that comes from these tears is, you just can't get away from it. Another key element of prevention is looking at posture. Your sitting posture, or general posture, provides the framework for how your arms can move. An optimal posture, as Brett is illustrating here, will help provide an optimal framework for the movement of arms. A suboptimal posture, if you're slouched and rounded forward in your shoulder, will provide a suboptimal framework for the movement of your arms and can contribute to the development of shoulder pain and injury. The key to this is about making sure that you're looking at particular areas of tightness if they're developing and doing the stretches that we talked about. But another key also is looking at the likes of the wheelchair and seating system and ensuring that it's getting you into a nice seated position to provide that framework that you require for the movement of your arms. It's really made a big difference since um, I saw a physiotherapist um, about my shoulders and I've got some exercises to do, some strengthening, um, some muscles that I weren't using as well as I could have been, um, looking at posture, looking at how you're using the chair and um, just your everyday activities. So uh, it's made a really good impact on, on how I am now and um, getting back into it and pretty much pain free again. Another important preventative measure is keeping yourself active. You might achieve this through engagement in sport or just general leisure activity. The benefits you'll gain from this include keeping your joints and muscles in prime condition, but also the benefits that you'll gain in terms of your general health and well-being and cardiovascular fitness. Reducing the load or demand on your arms and shoulders may need to consider weight loss. If you're carrying excess weight, then that's going to be placing excess load and demand on your shoulders. Weight loss needs to consider both diet and exercise and is a separate discussion altogether, but really important. The other thing to bear in mind is ageing. Now, as much as we'd like to believe otherwise, as we age, we're going to start to find some of the tasks that we used to find easy more difficult. Now, there's not going to be any alarm that's going to go off to tell you a point of time when you need to start to make these changes. But the thing is, is just to keep that in mind and be willing to make the, the change when the time is necessary. Making the change means offloading your shoulders, giving them a chance to be able to still tolerate and cope with the things that you're doing day to day to maintain your independence. Another example of adapting activity and reducing the load is with stowing a wheelchair in a vehicle. One way that you can change this is by using a hoist to stow the wheelchair in or on the vehicle. It's a common thing that can cause shoulder pain and injury and there's a simple solution by using the hoist. Let's talk about management of shoulder pain. In the first instance, it's recommended that you consult a healthcare professional. There's obviously a variety of different ways that shoulder pain can be managed. There are different forms of conservative management approaches that can be undertaken, including different forms of passive therapy. There's also different forms of pain management that could be, be looked at, as well as potentially forms of injection therapy, and in some instances, even shoulder surgery. Regardless of the cause, any amount of shoulder pain can cause severe disability for somebody who is reliant on their arms with daily activity, such as a person with spinal impairment. And for this reason, there are unique considerations for management of shoulder pain in this population. That is, how do you go about relative rest and offload your shoulders when you are suffering from shoulder pain? All daily activities that are contributing to 
or potentially could be the cause of your shoulder pain, need to be looked at. Looked at in a way that you may be able to adjust or modify the activity to offload your shoulders and give your shoulders a chance to rest. Common activities include the likes of wheelchair mobility and transfers. This may mean some drastic changes to the way that you function, at least for a short while to allow your shoulders a chance to rest. With transfers, it may mean that you need to use a lesser form of transfer to offload your shoulders, such as a slide board or a hoist. If you're a manual wheelchair user, it may mean using a power wheelchair for a short while to allow your shoulders a chance to rest. Thanks for watching this episode of Really Good Tips. Shoulder pain and injury doesn't have to affect you. The key is awareness. Awareness of the things that we've talked about in terms of prevention and management of shoulder pain. So I hope you've taken away a few key things that you might be able to do to keep your shoulders in good health. Healthy shoulders can allow you to lead a really healthy and active lifestyle. So the individualized plan will be considering the unique factors. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> oh good. With good shoulder health, the world's your oyster. And you can go and get it. <laughs> <Go on. laughs>